All right, we are live. Boom. Welcome to the Scotch Test Dummies. I'm Scott. I'm Bart. And with us today is Reverend Chris Toma. Christopher Toma, author of Nice of you guys to stop by. This is what what a surprise. Yeah. This is great. We've got the 2016 edition of George T. Stagg, uh, the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection. And what are we going to do, Bart? We're going to test it! <laughs> uh, Bart and I are in uh, Kansas. Reverend uh, Christopher, you're coming to us from where? Michigan. Coming to you from Michigan, just outside of Detroit. Oh, really? Yep. Now you've you've written a few books. Um, the main one we're going to talk about l later today is the Angels Portion, Volume Two, and but and the Angels Portion, Volume One. But I just noticed real quick uh, at the front you listed the other books that you've written, Christopher. Right. And one of them you listed is Ten Ways to Kill a Pastor. Love that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Let me tell you. Are those secrets you want to be putting out there? Uh, well, they're ones that certain folks that I know need to know, so I I put it on paper. You know, it took me five days to write that. There, it didn't take much. Really? Yeah, I, I wrote it in five days. I, I have a almost an autism when it comes to writing. I can do a lot, very short period of time. That one took me five days. Wow. Now, see, I can tell you, I remember my dad going out and doing a lot of hospital visits all the way till eight or nine o'clock at night. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You keep very busy. Mm-hmm. And then your dad, your dad going out and doing that and someone at the church coming up to him and, and saying, you know, you only work on Sundays. Yeah. Yeah. Want to know, uh, you know, wow, I wish I, I think the guy said, I wish I had your schedule and I only had to do a little prep work and then come in and preach for an hour. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Dad would have, uh, we'd be watching football or whatever, or, uh, you know, Saturday games, college games, and he would have you know, his Bible out, he'd have whatever other little study guide he was working on, and he'd be making notes. And I didn't realize when I was young, of course, he was putting together his sermon, you know, for the, yeah. uh, the following day, or he was working on it throughout the week. Um, but yeah, it was, it was interesting how I saw him kind of work on that, even at night, you know, or, you know, the, the week or the days prior. So. Gotcha. You know, you kind of look like Pippi Longstocking with that hat, <laughs> just so you know. I like Pippi. Pippi, well, you know, that red hair and just that, you know, she was kind of wild. There yeah, you go. Yeah, yeah, she was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to point out, Bart, your, uh, the picture that you have on your header down there, it yeah. looks like it looks like a small child. Yeah. Uh, that, was, that was you last Friday, though, at that barbecue joint. <laughs> Love the barbecue. Yes, that's my young boy. He's actually nine now, but he was enjoying his spaghetti at the time, and that's just frolicking right there in spaghetti. <laughs> That's perfect. I love it's it. That's good. All right, let's look at a couple comments real quick. People that have joined in. Malted in Montreal is, is commenting. Ronald McCoy. Uh, Jamie Beaver's with us. Adam Irving. Um, and Jamie, I was going to say the same thing. It's a good thing you, you brought it up, but he points out that Charlie Whitehurst is quarterbacking the Browns right now. Yes. Our last live stream, one of our commenters, and we've had him a couple times, has been Charlie Whitehurst. I don't know if it's the same one or not. Well, I guess if he's not commenting right now, we know he's quarterback in the Browns. Well, That's pretty cool. Junior. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> <clears throat> um, Ronald McCoy is jealous that we got this bottle. So, um, anyway, let's talk about the George no Stag. This is, this is one of five bottles that Buffalo Trace puts out an annual special release, the Antique Collection. But you've got the George Stagg. They put out a William LaRue Weller, an Eagle Rare 17-year-old, a Sazerac Rye 18-year-old, and a Thomas H. Handy Sazerac. Um, now, the George Stagg is 15 years old, and it's bottled at a whopping 72.05%. If you Ooh. can read that. Bam. Uh, we can read it. That looks great. Which is high, lat and I've got last year's release as well, um, and it was sixty nine point one percent. So we'll go through what we'll do. We'll go through our tasting a little bit here first, and then we'll talk about uh, Angel's portion. 
Now, we should mention, just because some tuning in probably don't know, or, or maybe they do, but Reverend Thomas is an ordained minister. He's got he's wearing his collar. Now, as a Lutheran, um, there was always some people surprised, usually those that didn't have as much religion or were Baptists. They would be surprised that my dad would have a beer now and then. Mm -hmm. um, Lutherans are not, uh, they don't, well, I don't know, maybe you can explain better, because I think some people get shocked. They would be like, like I said, Lutherans understood that that even my dad, the pastor, uh, could have a beer. So, um, but, and you're, are you Wisconsin Synod? Oh, we're, I'm Missouri Synod. Missouri Synod. Yeah, Missouri Synod. And that's a little more strict than the ELCA, if I understand, right? Well, a, a little more is an understatement. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, and that's, I mean that, I mean that, uh, I mean sure. that very kindly. <laughs> sure. You bet. We but, actually, but, the believe that we actually believe the Bible is God's word. So, uh, now explaining, so, uh, but you're not breaking any kind of rules or any kind of covenants by, uh, by consuming alcohol, at least from your standpoint. No, 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 no. In fact, um, if you've read the books, the, uh, you'll see that I use, I call people pietists all the time. I don't know if you remember that in their part, but uh, pi and pietism is kind of our fault. The Lutherans sort of started it back in the 17th century. Philip Spainer is the guy. Uh, and I could go into the theology of it, but essentially pietism took root, is still moving forward in a lot of mainline uh, Protestant churches. And essentially, it takes its uh, rules from the cultural uh, miseries of the time rather than taking them from the Bible. So when it comes to things like drinking or whatever, it, because there's the possibility of drunkenness, you should not have any alcohol. Although the Old Testament, the New Testament actually prescribes it in certain circumstances. So it's kind of a pietism's a mess. And I love to stick it to the pietists. In fact, I tell the pietists, stay pietists, because that means there's more booze for me. <laughs> More booze for everybody else. Just keep your pietism. There you go. Perfectly fine. Perfectly there fine. you go. I just figured we would address it because I figured someone would ask um, at some point in time. I think some people would be surprised. You know, my dad had a 40th birth surprise birthday party, and all the uh, you know the church came out, all the members, and and there was mixed drinks and there was beer, and and it was it would just be interesting because non members or non-believers would be like, wow, your dad has a beer now and then? I'd go, yeah. So well, I just had I just had a wedding last night and at the reception, went over to the bar. And I sometimes I like doing this anyway, just because I love the looks. It's like when I walk through Walmart with my wife and my four kids and they see me wearing my collar. Mm -hmm. You know, they just, <laughs> yeah. they do this kind of a look because, you know, I look like a priest and I shouldn't have this stuff. But right. you go over to the bar, you get a, I get myself a scotch come sit back down. So Reverend, what do you got? Apple juice? No, it's really <laughs> crappy scotch. That's all they got here is really crappy stuff. That's right. Very good. Yeah. Sorry, Bruno. I took you off the, uh, off the thing there. Go for it, brother. Yeah, I just, I just muted myself for a while there. Yeah. I was waiting for you to yell good, Delvin Elvis at some point. Nah, nah. <laughs> um, yeah, I was going to point out real quick. We've got a few more commenting, but, uh, Klaus Dobelman is with us. Uh, first time I think, but, I know uh, Klaus sure. has been following us on Twitter and, and been a Twitter follower for quite a while. Yeah. Are the are the pietists commenting? I don't uh, know. No, no comments from the pietists. Probably shun the uh, Scotch reviews. Okay, good. Maybe. Maybe. Probably. Probably. So, but so uh, Klaus, Klaus is over in uh, Germany somewhere, isn't he? Um, where you at, Klaus? Where, where you at, Klaus? Austria? Minnesota. <laughs> that could be too. No, he is across the pond there somewhere. But uh, all right, what are you guys getting on the news? Let's jump right in there. Go ahead, Toma. Well, uh, you want me to tell you what I I wrote yeah. in my review a little bit, or do you want me to tell you what I'm getting right now? No, I give you can go from your notes. You can give us what you're getting now. Well, I I thought my second try. This is my second try with it because I got two of the vials. And the first uh -huh. try. The first try, and again, I hope we can be friends. Hey, hey, <laughs> be honest. You can be honest. I sure. got a, I got a very chemical, very medicinal, uh, and the one thing that sort of came to mind when I first tried it 
I took a good whiff of it. Um, more stacks of stale, dusty copy paper uh, in the office. Yeah, it does have a little bit of, of a old, uh, yeah, a little bit of dusty wood. And it's, I think that really strong, that 72% ABV is what's given that really strong medicinal alcoholic right, right. smells coming off of it. Now, this second time around, it's been sitting for a little bit longer than when I first tried it. And I'd say I'm getting something more like the, um, like those Twizzler chews, those cherry, like, uh, nibs. Yeah. Those things. That's right. The bites or whatever they're called. Yeah. I was going to say, I kind of get like a sweet, um, and I get little hints of dark fruit, but I definitely get the nibs. That's why as soon as you started to say that, that surprised me because I was going to say the same thing. There's a little bit of that cherry licorice nib. But you have to dig deep. I, I didn't cut this with water, and you've got to get down there um, to find it. It's it's not that easy to find. Uh, yeah. Herman, Herman Mucker has joined us, and um, we are looking at this is the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection, George Stagg. And uh, Herman says, hey, Reverend, respect from Brampton, Canada. And peace Klaus, out, peace out, G. Peace <laughs> out to, where do you say he was from? Uh, Brampton, Canada. Brampton, All I'm Canada. Gonna say, I say to Herman, I say passion, brother. Bring the passion. <laughs> that goes back a ways there. <laughs> yeah, Herman translated something, and I blew it totally when we recorded. Now, Kla Klaus is in Austria. And Gary Ziak has joined us. And he's got the George Dickel rye, but he thinks we missed the mark on that a little bit there. Nothing special. Uh, middle of the road, uh, which is Bart is the one that's over enthusiastic on the George Dickel rye. I oh, do man. like it. I do like it. Um, but it's good for the price point. A lot of bang uh, for your buck with that rye. Yeah. You know, I, I don't remember if I if I liked it or not. <laughs> there you go. By the way. I love your index in there. You added that index to volume two. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know I mentioned that on Twitter, but that index is phenomenal because I was able to go just thumb through, and I'm looking at Ozzy Osbourne and then, you know, St. Peter, and then I'm bouncing over to C.S. Lewis. Love that. Yeah, the uh, new one, I took your commendation on that, and with the re-release, asked to add uh, an index in that too. So not only do you get to read the foreword by Darth Vader, but now you can find – <laughs> all of the other things. Yeah, that's that's the second printing of volume one there that you have, isn't it? That's right. You sold out of the first printing. Wonderful. Um, real quick, we've got uh, Whiskey Rover from Scotland has joined in, and George Pantaleone from Greece. Wow. We've got a worldwide audience today. I'm adding, I'm just going to add it. I've got my Sonic ice cubes back again, the real small <laughs> ones, which I like because I can add just a, just a drop or two of ice into my bourbon. And the uh, fact is, we'll talk about it later, but at the end of your book, uh, Chris, you've got a little little short story on adding ice to whiskey or not. Right. And Saying it's, it's not a sin. It's not right. a sin. And there, yeah. the, I mean, that's it. That's the word right there. <laughs> What did you the get river. on the nose, Scott? <laughs> That's true. Um, it's are a, you, are you, oh, go ahead, go ahead. I was gonna say it's a, it, it's a very strong bourbon smell. Um, and when I first nosed it, um, just how it come up out of there, it really hits you in the face. Um, I get that that old 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 Ooh. old oak. Yeah, very strong. I took a little sip there, neat, and went Ooh. right to my eyes. <laughs> wow. I took a little see, bit too big of a sip. See, I love the kick. I love the kick of this stuff. This is the kind of stuff that's strong enough that would make, in fact, I say it in the review, I'd get rid of my coffee in the morning, mm. uh, and I would drink this instead if I wouldn't have the pietist after me completely. But this, <laughs> I'm, I'm getting some, I'm getting a little bit of gin. I don't know about you, but. Well, I'm not a gin drinker, so I don't neither, know. Neither am I, which. Uh, Wow. Uh, it, it concerns me. <laughs> I get um, a very smooth. Well, once once I've added some ice and it's bringing it down now a little bit, it's a very smooth, velvety takeover in my mouth. The alcohol moving in there. Um, I get vanilla, oak, 
a little bit of cinnamon. Now I'm going to tell you, and Chris, I'm going to send you a sample of last year's uh, release because it's different than this one. Okay. So we'll go we'll go on. Bart, what do you got? Well, you're talking taste. Wow. You're right. It's uh, that real strong alcohol punch right off the top. But then it was also, it had a velvety smoothness to it. Great mouth feel, but really caught me off guard. I'm going to take, I'm going to kind of use that technique where I almost froth it up a little bit, bring in just a little bit more. I'm not adding any water yet, but I'm going to add a little water to it. The, uh, it had that, I mean, I need to try it again. It was this, I didn't expect that explosion, that burst of flavor that was in there. I mean, that really, that really got me. I thought I was taking in a small, sorry, I had to get my Pippi long tail back on my, my shoulder here, but that was, woo, that was something. Now, you guys know all those clowns that are running around in the United States right now, scaring everybody? <laughs> I see clowns every day. <laughs> you know, yeah, I know. Um, that, that's what's in my glass. There, there's a clown in there trying to stab me in the face <laughs> um, every time I go down to get a sip. <laughs> Except at the same time, he's feeding me pumpkin pie and whipped cream. Uh, and with each Good. gouge, with each gouge, it, I, I'm getting a little bit more of that. But still, he's trying to kill me. Wow. Mm. That is great. You just wrote a page right there. That was beautiful. <laughs> yeah, there uh, is cinnamon. Like a nutmeg, yeah. I see what you're saying. Oh, that that custard, that that pumpkin pie. Now I'll tell you, sweet cream. Yeah, sweet even the cream. crust. Wow. Yeah. I'm a little disappointed in this year's release. Really? I don't think I don't think it's as good as last year's, and that's why I'll send you a sample. Last okay. year's was much fuller, much darker, um, much more kind of a chocolate. That really deep. Um, wood flavors were coming out in it. So this one, still strong, still good, not as dark as last year's mm. on the palate. Um, and I know Adventures in Whiskey. Uh, Bobby, your comment, I know you've had it. What's your thoughts on that? Well, re and real quick, Scott, you rated last year's as your top, your top bourbon of the year, I think, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Because we do our top five uh, scotch, top five bourbon. We're going to add in a top five rye of when we do 2016s. But, yeah, you had this as number one of 2015, right? Yes. Uh, yeah, and he's already Bobby's already commented. He said this one is good. It's oak forward compared to the last few years. And he does agree with me on uh, last year's being better. Well, then I, I would look forward to getting a sample of that last year's. And, and trying it because this, yeah. I've, I've heard a lot of good things uh -huh. about them. I've, this is the first edition I've ever tried, um, and I, and I keep chalking this particular edition up to maybe not being as as refined with the bourbons as maybe I could be because I'm still more of a Scotch guy. I'm, I'm yeah. spending a lot of time in the bourbons, but I mean I've got something like 350 open bottles of different stuff, and a lot of them now were bourbons. But I'm uh, I'm really struggling to like this one. They're scorched. It's like scorched cinnamon in there. Like somebody scraped some cinnamon off the bottom of the pan. And and I make the comment in my review, um, which is not live yet, that these uh, barrel strength whiskeys, they need a one like this needs help. It needs a lot of help with the water in order to open it up. And and I know people will say, well, you know, a lot of them with these high ABVs need a lot of help. But that's not always true. There are some out there that are beautiful right out of the bottle. Um, you pour, in my example that I use, is the Aberlord um, Abunad. That one is a, mm. that one is, is beautiful no matter which batch you get, and it's right out of the right out of the cask. That's one of my favorites. There yeah, and that's that's a good one. This one this one needs some help, I think, and uh, and that you know I don't know I, if, um, if it needs help, why not just help it at the distillery and then send it to me. I, I, I think as, as far as bourbons go, it's still good. Um, there's a lot to it. It's, not, it's just not as good as last year's. And I've got uh, Adam Stevenson has asked how it compares to the Stag Jr. And honestly, I think the Stag Jr. is probably even better than this year's release. Um, it's still the Stag Jr. still has 
a lot more of that darkness the you know the dark notes the chocolates and the coffee and the toffee and stuff that comes out with it you're calling for a versus here scott it's going to be a versus well we might have to just do this one and, and last year side by side and see because i know I, I i'll tell you right now blind i will pick out last year's head and shoulders over i mean within the, probably off of the nose i could probably yeah. pick out last year's version i buy this but i wouldn't drink it all the time uh, Bobby Childs also agrees with you, Reverend Toma, that he says Reverend Toma is completely right here on your comments back when you was talking about the cast strength versions. Right. Mm. Uh, Whiskey Daddy just joined us. It, he says, wow, early show. Yep, early show. And this was because the church has uh, Reverend Toma busy, apparently, on Sundays. Well, I... I just have, I'm like you, Bart, you know, I've got four kids and to be up at, you guys want to be on at 11 and I get up at 5.30. So, oh, yeah. So I, had, I was already here, rolled out of one meeting into the next. I, as I was going to say, I noticed you're coming to us, it looks like, from work as well. Yeah, I'm in my, I'm in my office. So, now, did you ha have to hang a sign up telling people not to bother you? Don't come in. Yeah, I put recording in process. Oh, okay. there you go. <laughs> Stay away. Yeah, because here's what I had to do. I, I got up, I let my wife sleep in. I've already done some vacuuming and cleaning of the kitchen. And then my my, uh, my nine-year-old son's best friend came over and the dog was going crazy. So I had to go out and say, hey guys, you mind just going over to Luke's house? <laughs> right? And they're like, sure, no problem. So everything's kind of been around. But, uh, but yeah, Scott also let me know that in the future, near future, we're gonna be doing kind of another early show with someone actually from England, right? Yeah, probably our next version in two weeks will be with a, a dram a day, Ben Bowers, and uh, it's going to be in the afternoon, probably 3.30 probably Central Time. I'm cashing in some chips on these early shows. I'm just letting Scott know. <laughs> <laughs> so, But no, I love it. And being able to, I was really excited, uh, Chris, to have you on the show, to talk to you. Um, just to bring it back to your books a little bit. Um, I mean, just, uh, I know I, I referenced it and we got the little the blur, but the whimsy that you bring to your Scotch review and the, the, the short story nature of it is just phenomenal. And I've got to ask you how, you, you said you write quickly, but does something come to your mind? I know you had one where you were going through the McDonald's drive through um, I, I'm trying to think of several, but where do you, where's your muse come from? Well, I, I don't really need one. Um, and I've had folks ask me that, you know, where do you come up with this stuff? Um, folks who maybe get writer's block or something like that. I, I never, ever have writer's block. If you're looking around, there's plenty of stuff to talk about. And honestly, in most of these reviews that I write, I write them on the treadmill. I got, I walk for 50 minutes and by the time I'm done, the reviews them. Wow. Uh, I have my, I have my notes. It um, doesn't take long. But, you know, just anything and everything. Life in the church is pretty exciting as it is. You'll read a lot of stories in there yeah. about that kind of stuff. But no no particular muse other than the whiskey itself. And and something always comes. When it's time to when it's time to write it, something's always there that fits and makes the transition. Well, like you're you know, I'm a fan of Lafroig and yeah. I, I just was looking again at your Lafroigs and your Lafroig tenure, just the standard tenure. You get yeah. into the, the licking of the stick and the barbarian with his sword, and, and <laughs> I'm just going, yes, yes. I mean, it definitely yeah. brings that whole, that whole, you're, you're out there. I mean, you just got it. I mean, that was it. Well, you now you know why the dog runs and hides. <laughs> That's right. When you, when you break out the Lefroy 10. Right. You might, stick, you might stick him on that stick and cook him and eat him. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, and that's that's volume one. Volume two, you just had me rolling when you had the elderly woman that's weighing her grapes, and uh, and she keeps picking off the grapes to get the weight down, and then you go into might as well eat some corn on the cob right here in the store. Why not? Why not? <laughs> yeah. So I just charge the old lady. They're not going to charge the reverend. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Want to make hey, a hey, salad? Hey, Rever <laughs> Reverend Reverend Toma, Whiskey yeah. Rover asks. Which whiskey before an exorcism? Mm. Uh, let's see. That's a good one. Let's see. Would it depend on the demon? No, no. Because they're all a bunch of 
they're, the demons are pietists. So <laughs> let's see. I, you know, I would probably go with something that, like, well, you know, actually something like this would be good before an exorcism. Oh, I'd yeah. Grab this, yeah, give you that kick, give you that that fire good. in your belly for taking on the other world. I good to see that. Heck yeah. So. Now, uh, I did pour this before we started the broadcast, and with time now, it really seems to be bringing out some more of the cinnamon and the vanilla notes. I get cherry cordials now, chocolate uh -huh. cherry cordials. I've been continually adding water to it. Sip, add water, sip, add some more water, sip, add. I need some of that sonic ice. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. I like those little cubes. My wife buys that once in a while, a big bag of it. So we're not, we are not getting paid by Sonic to advertise their ice. <laughs> now, I notice you guys keep your, uh, I, I notice a lot of guys will stage the backgrounds. You guys don't necessarily do that, but you keep your bottles out. You know that's bad, don't you? That's bad for your bottles, unless you're drinking them quickly. Yeah, um, okay. I, I am in my basement, and this room is usually fairly dark enough and, and a little bit good, cooler. Good. Yeah, so I did open up. There is a window in here which I just opened up the blind since we were in the afternoon to let a little bit more light in for a change. Okay. So. Because I care, I care about your whiskey as much as you do. Sure. So sure. Also in the basement down here, <laughs> and uh, the only light is coming in from the blinds here. But uh, okay. but yes, love having them in the background along with a few different things. So, and that Jameson's black is about this far from being gone. That needs a good heel slay. So. Okay. You could use that to wash this stuff down. <laughs> there you go. Although, yeah. yeah, otherwise it'd be too overpowered. That Jameson's black is smooth, smooth, Karen. Yeah. Hey, let's just touch on again. We've had some people coming and going, but we do have, uh, we're with the author, Reverend uh, Christopher Toma. He's written several books, including The Angels Portion 1, and or Volume 1, and now Volume 2, which we'll be talking about here as well. But uh and we're getting a lot of comments again that are coming in. I can't address them all, so I'm kind of just watching and pulling a few out as we go. Now, with the, the thickness, um, I think more than doubled with Volume 2. I've got to ask, and I know Volume 2 just hit, Is will there be a Volume 3? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there will be. All right. Yeah, it'll happen. It'll take about, it'll probably take about six, seven months to get it done. Wow. You're and I bet it... It'll be about as thick as volume two, probably. Wow, prolific. Yeah. Look at that. That is something. Yeah, because, I mean, I noticed that was something. I mean, I mean, this is good. But when that showed up, you were right. That is a uh, that is just a beast. And then... Yeah. Just so you can uh, see it, volume two. And you were solely scotch with volume one. Isn't that correct, if I'm looking? Well, there's a couple of... Like, there's a Japanese whiskey in there. There are a couple of others. Um... Let's see. I put it in the sec the section five. The blend. I put blends in there. I put uh, mm. some classic bottles that I had, like the Canadian Club 1955 bottling I had, and, uh, which was was garbage then. It's garbage now. <laughs> uh, a white. I had a 1939 bottle of White Horse Cellar that I reviewed, um, but mostly it was Scotch. All right, uh, and that's one thing I want to let uh, potential readers know. Not only are you getting a, a legit scotch or, or whiskey review, you're getting the whimsy and you're getting that hard, straight honesty. When you don't like something, it's just like what you just did there. You don't you don't sugarcoat it, boom, you throw it out there. Well, it's, yeah, I don't do ratings. I know a lot of folks will do ratings. They'll do, you know, and I think even you guys do that too. You know, you maybe give zero to a hundred. I just don't do it. Either I like it and it's something that I would drink again, um, if it's phenomenal. I'll point that out. If it's something I'd buy and drink again, I just tell you that. If it's complete garbage, I'll just tell you it's complete garbage. Don't uh, and I will describe it in a way that God willing will be very, very memorable for you. <laughs> Perfect. Just so just so I can reference this to my wife, she just texted me and said, Come get your dog. <laughs> she's <laughs> drinking the she's drinking the Lafroig ten probably. <laughs> That's right. Bring um, your sword. Hey, a couple comments real quick. Again, a lot coming in. Um, Malted in Montreal pointed out that Brooklotti Dark Arts would be perfect before the exorcism. Yeah, maybe. Maybe uh, the uh, Highland Park Dark Origins. Oh, there you go. Yeah. 
Uh, Lewis Wells asks if we sip before the broadcast. He finds he needs to prepare his palate, especially with cask strength. That is a good question, Louis. Today I did not, just because it's two in the afternoon. Now, maybe the Reverend was already imbibing. No, I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> and my deal is when we do the live show, I don't uh, even try what we're going to be having. I haven't pre-tasted it. So it's my very first impression of, of what I'm having. So, no, I hadn't had anything, and this is the first time I've had this. Yeah. No, yeah I, and I, don't I, normally, I don't normally drink uh, whiskey around the church. I'm only doing this here because I've got a computer that can manage what we're doing. So. <laughs> now, uh, Pradeep has joined us, Bart. He says hello. All and right. Pradeep is uh, uh, Indian in Australia, I think should be his tagline. <laughs> yeah. And then also, can you note where this book is available at? You can pretty much get it at Amazon. That's the place. But you can also get it at Barnes & Noble, a place like that. Or you can ask your smaller bookstores to order it for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I ordered uh, Volume 1 right off of Amazon. I might have been on your your blog, I think, might have even had a link. Yeah, I think so. And then, yeah, I clicked in, took me right to Amazon. Boom. I got Amazon Prime. It was here in a couple days. Okay. Yeah. Or you can, go, you can also go right to Grail Quest. Uh, books um, and you can look on their site as well and they've got it there I, I don't know if they send you to, to Amazon or not I think maybe they do but they also link to my site I've got on my site if you want a signed copy there's a link a PayPal link that you can click on and I'll I'll send you personally a copy that I've signed Wow that's cool hmm. what else you got Bruno what's coming in uh, still sipping. I actually poured a little bit more in my glass. And I don't comment on it a lot of times, but the legs, the, the streams this thing is leaving on the glass, I doubt you'll be able to see them, but they're still, that alcohol is still just clinging to the glass. I think I'm going to get some McDonald's ice. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get an ice sponsor at some point in time, brother. Um, I was going to say, though, usually I like, to, I like to sample and taste and take some notes before... Uh, even the live streams and I did the other day when I got these samples ready for you uh, Reverend and sent them, put them in the mail I did just have a little taste of this so I right. did kind of know coming in and even then I was a little disappointed that it wasn't up to last year's um, standards or last year's <laughs> mark as well so I um, just, got a, just got a note that my post went live so I, I figured I'd give it a half hour into the show before having it go live just in case oh there you go okay now i did let's, let's move into the book a little bit more i know you guys are talking i'll tell you i looked at this and i, and I went through i was like well which reviews do i want to read and i thought do i want to read something that we haven't reviewed or should i read something i haven't had time to read the whole thing yet <laughs> and and so then i thought well maybe i'll read something that we have reviewed and then i thought then I was just overwhelmed because you got so many in here. So that I read, I skipped, I skipped the middle and I read the front and the back. <laughs> but did you, I, did I didn't you read? Skip. It's on did the front, but I didn't realize it until I read it. But the foreword is by Martin Gillespie. Yes, it is. So of uh, Whiskey Cast. So we hope to have him on the show, do a live stream with him someday. Did you read the portion? Sorry, I don't want to cut in. Did you read the portion where he talks about his son having got into his uh, the zombie book? There, did you read that, Scott? Uh, the part about uh, the his foreword or his uh, introduction at the dinner table where they started talking zombies and yeah, yeah, yeah. You had yeah. me right there, Reverend. Yeah. You had me right there. <laughs> you had yeah. me at zombies. Yes, <laughs> that is my house. There, my boy will have something almost identical to that. So. Yeah. Well, now you guys are Star Wars guys too, right? Huge. Okay. Huge. What's your favorite, favorite movie? What's favorite? What's my favorite? Oh, yes. well, you know that one. That's The Empire Strikes Back. Boom. The best. That's right. Now, I was 10 when that first came out. I don't know when you were born. How old were you? I, I was born in 72. So. Oh, there you go. Okay, we're both 70 children, so. Yeah. I did see it at the theater. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep, I remember seeing all of them, the first three in the theater. I am. Now I cut you off, Scott. Sorry, you were you were in there, and I started blabbering. 
Um, I don't even remember. You were talking about uh, you'd read a little bit of the front, a little bit of the back. Oh, yeah. So I had the front, the story, uh, the dinner table talking about um, zombies, um, who would be the, the first one bitten, or not the first one bitten. Is that what it was? You yeah. feared one, you feared one of your kids away. would ask? <laughs> Tried to steer them away from that. But yeah. my six my six year old is the one that started it. She did that. Uh, you know, here's a church. Here's the steeple. Open the door and see all the zombies. But uh, you know, kind of a thing. <laughs> she learned that from her older brother. Yeah, and the older brother was the one that was about how you shouldn't go out and rock and roll or full auto because you're wasting ammo. Yeah, you're wasting ammo. You got to get single shots in. Boom! Yeah. Genius. Uh, one of the things I did like then moving towards the end of the book, you give your top ten reasons for moving to Scotland. And then you also go into a kind of a little uh, chapter on um, bourbon and scotch snobs. And I just wanted to read point number five. And, and this is kind of how to treat or things to do to either a bourbon or a scotch snob. And number five, it says, while sitting at a bar beside a bourbon snob, Ask him which of the bourbons on the bar shelf is the best. When he makes his recommendation, order one, but also order up the house's cheapest scotch. When both drinks are set before you, dump the scotch into the bourbon and say, oh, this just helps make it tolerable. <laughs> <laughs> so that would be, I suppose you could reverse that around for the, uh, make it palatable to the, to the bourbon snob. Oh yeah. Well, I used to, I used to be a Scotch snob, but I'm not anymore. Yeah. Um, um, not as much, at least as I used to be. There you go. Now, well, we really when and we've said this when we started, we just were going to do Scotch reviews, and that branched into world whiskeys. We did some Irish, we did some Japanese, we did a bourbon or two, and then yeah. we we kind of started doing the extra episode with just the America's bourbons with the Canadians or with America's whiskeys, and. Um, here we are, 230 episodes later. Well, I, I was sort of forced into the bourbons because I walk into the shop where I would buy my scotches, and I look at the shelf, and I own every single bottle on the shelf. Mm. Now, now what do I do? And I want to keep reviewing stuff. Um, so I ended up going into the bourbons and started connecting, reading up on some of them. And I struggled for a while to find any that I appreciated. But now I'm, I'm getting more into it, getting a little bit more refined, I think. So. Well, I'm similar to you, I, and, and Scout will get on me occasionally. I still lean towards scotch. I really, really like those scotches, the, the blendeds, the single malts. And it's the rise probably I warm up to a little bit more. And there are some bourbons that are definitely jumping up and standing out for me. But I seem to get a lot more complexity out of a scotch when I sit down with it. It'll it'll transition for me as I sip on it. And that's what I really, really love about scotch in particular. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think there's a lot of variance in scotch, a lot more variance in scotch than there necessarily are in the American whiskeys. And then you get into things like the Japanese whiskeys. Those are those are good. I'm really starting to like those a lot. I had the Nika coffee whiskey. Really like that one a lot. That's a go-to now. Um, but I'm, I'm still uh, I'm struggling with some of the bourbons still. I, I found some that I like. I like Bullet. Bullet's not too bad. Um, Buffalo Trace. Eh. Read the review. <laughs> Are there any rye that you've taken a shine to? Um, you know that you. Uh, I, I think I did kind of like that George Dickel. Mm. I think it was. I think it was confident. I, I'd have to go back and look, but I think I did like that one. I've got a, a bottle of that. I know you. You weren't real keen on the Rittenhouse rye. No, no, that's the Ozzy Osbourne one, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. That that was that was weird. That was really weird. Read read the book, but sure. that was weird. Yeah. When you're trying to order your cheeseburger and the girl is singing Mr. Crowley. <laughs> I mean, and getting into it, getting into it, dancing and moving and singing. Mm -hmm. Just give me my, give me my cheeseburger. <laughs> uh, Whiskey Daddy can't believe you're 44 years old. I don't know if he thinks you thought you was older than that or what. No, you look about I'm not, 36. I'm, not 34. I'm 43. I'll be 44. Yeah. <laughs> don't yeah, put me over 46. the edge. 
I would have said 34 to 36. Well, you know, it's the whiskey, man. It keeps you keeps you young. Well, apparently it doesn't keep your hair from changing color because mine's gray. <laughs> I'm 46. I'm just a couple years older than you. Of course, uh, you're sp spring chicken. I started turning gray when I was 30. You did, okay. though. That was that was because you rode with me at the office and got a little scared on a couple occasions. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I, again, guys, I'm trying to keep up with the comments as best as I can, and there's just a lot rolling in. Um, Read the yeah. offensive ones. <laughs> well, Klaus <laughs> Dobelman was kind of he, – he had some comments for being the – for scotch over bourbon. Um, everybody's kind of commenting back and forth on that. Now, I will um, say the very first time that I worked with Scott, he like immediately we we uh, we sat down and he said I'm going to tell you right off the bat I'm a Star Wars fan not a little bit but a lot love it and <laughs> I love the Broncos and I was like get out he goes I don't care what you say that's who I am I said I moved here from Denver and I too love Star Wars the Star Wars movie was the first movie that I was literally captivated by. Oh, yeah. he, he even said, I don't like it a little bit. I collect the figures and keep them in boxes. That's how much I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, then, and then Bart went on to say something about Tatooine. Yes. So, what? He goes, what? yeah, Tatooine, where Luke I'm is from. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much me for the rest of my life there. I will mispronounce <laughs> something, think I'm correct, and and really, really think I'm right. And then Bruno will prove I'm wrong, and I'll just have to suck it up. <laughs> well, tat Tattooty's pretty off, though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much me right there. Okay. <laughs> So oh, yeah. I will argue like I know exactly what I'm talking about, which will, on occasion will surprise Bruno because he'll be like, wow, how'd you know fifth string uh, receiver with the Patriots? I'm like, doesn't everybody? So <laughs> yeah, we used to, Bart, we used to be in the same fantasy football league and, and Bart couldn't remember who Eli Manning was, <laughs> you know, and, but then he remembered Tequan Underwood one weekend, Ooh. like a third string, four string receiver for the yeah. Patriots who he'd started and got like 30 points out of. Yeah, he was hot. I knew he was going to be good. Yeah, every <laughs> so, once in a while the brain opens up and unfolds and it's impressive. You, you're, you're one of those guys then, Bart, that can name the Star Wars character when the speeder bikes are going flying by, you know, and, and right. it's just one glimpse of a, of a character and you know that obscure character. Boom! Right, well, and, I, and unfortunately, I can't draw on that at, at like all times. It's it floods. It's almost like yeah. I can trick myself. <laughs> okay. Flash flashes of genius. Yes. <laughs> well, I keep a uh, keep my lightsaber on my on my shelves here. Oh, uh oh, you're good. Use it on the confirmands. <laughs> oh, there you go. I needed it. Yeah, we don't in the Missouri Synod. We practice excommunication. Really? Um, yeah, but uh, sometimes you just gotta <laughs> you gotta take it to the next level. All right, I had we had some great youth group stuff when I was a kid growing up. My dad was like the uh, always the cool pastor. He was always running the different games that we were doing, yeah. all kinds of stuff. So, huh. all right, let's touch on it real quick again on the Angels portion, Volume Two. Right at the end, a quick paragraph you put out on putting ice in your whiskey. And what's your viewpoint on that, Christopher? Well, I, I think the snobs will say don't do it. But I think in the end, and now I don't do it. I don't put ice in it. Um, and I don't necessarily like water in it. But that's because I like to make it last longer. But if somebody wants to put ice in it, wants to put water in it, perfectly fine with me. I mean, if they need to tone it down a little bit, perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. So... We've, we've always said uh, to each their own, however you like it. If you want to add yeah. water, if you want to add ice, if you want to add Sprite, add Sprite. Well, Most if you add Sprite to like it, it. I'm going to get out of my house. If you <laughs> add Sprite to it, get out. Get out. <laughs> that's not allowed. That's, well, that's what the Johnny Walker Red is for. Oh, uh, yeah. Johnny Walker Red was good enough for Sir Winston Churchill and, uh, I don't know, the gutter maybe. <laughs> I, know, I can't believe Churchill liked the Red. Well... I don't know. Maybe it was, yeah, I mean, the guy could get anything. And I love the way uh, Churchill's writings are phenomenal. And then I'm like, hey, he was a fan of the red. I'm like, really? 
Well, he had to have a massive supply because he was quite the consumer. So maybe, you know, uh, I know Johnny Walker made a lot. But surely he could have got a massive supply of anything. you got to know they were lining up to say, hey, this. I kept wondering if maybe that was somehow marketing that got a hold of that and said, hey, this is his favorite. But Yeah, it might have been. I don't know. But I there are some. Yeah, there's some photos of him drinking it, so I know he I did know. drink it. And, yeah. and back then, it was kind of like how the uh, UK guys will have their football teams. They just pick one and they stick with it, whereas the new era, I think, are kind of like us, like you, where we, I really want to try everything. Yeah. So, definitely. Except uh, schnapps. Oh. Yeah, no. Well, there you go. What else you got coming in, Scott? I see you reading the comments. Yep, a couple of comments. Food Quig has joined us. He's up in Canada. Um, he says, if it's your glass of whiskey, you're entitled to enjoy it any way you like. What if it's Basil yep. Hayden's? Basil Hayden's, the Basil. <laughs> what if somebody rips off the vestment of the Basil Hayden's? And Adam Irving points out that Winston Churchill smoked enough cigars to ruin his palate. Okay, that's probably true. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably true. It was pretty dumb. <laughs> but still, uh, if you drink your whiskey however you want, but if you put Sprite in it, get out. Let's talk, um, let's do Is It Worth It real quick on this George Stag, which retails for $90. Um, Bart? No. You could go get you some good rye for about 30 bucks. Okay. Reverend Toma, what do you think? <clears throat> no, I, I don't think I'd pay ninety dollars. So, I think yeah, I think at ninety bucks I'd move to a Balvini or something like that. Oh um, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Now I'll say I, I think it is worth it. It's still good. It's not as good as last year's release. Um, I'd still I'd like to try and and next year if I find next year's edition I'll buy it as well. Um, so, but I think it's like I say it's. Last year, 2015, George Stagg, enthusiastically, yes. 2016, George Stagg, yeah, yes. <laughs> well, you know, what you could do is you could take this bottle and you could dump half of it into another empty bottle, fill that up with water, and now you double jump. Oh, yeah, that's true. You get two bottles. Your booze. Almost. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, might do, I might do that. You would do that? Scott, yeah. would you do that? I thought about doing that, actually. Yeah. <laughs> really? Perfect, perfect for mowing the grass. You go mow the grass, come in. Yeah. <laughs> you got to use sonic water. water. <laughs> what we'll do, we'll have to go ahead and we'll probably do a full review of this BART on the show. And then, like I say, we'll pull out the 2015 as well. I think probably in the same video and just touch on both of them. Yeah, I think you'd have to try them back to back. And since you own both bottles, you must do this. Yes. And Chris, I'll send you a uh, I'll send you a sample of last year's also. Okay. So yeah. Thank it. you. Yeah, I'd like to try that. Can you still get last year's anywhere, or is it pretty no. much done? It's gone. No, I think um, I haven't seen the numbers on this year's. Um, if anybody knows, uh, speculation last year was there was around five thousand bottles. I think of last year's. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Um, now um, we also got some comments coming in that on the secondary market. Um, these sell for three to five hundred dollars. Okay. From the people that buy these and then try to make money off of them. The two thousand sixteen is selling for that much. Yeah, they all. Yeah. All the, mm -hmm. Wow. Huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, secondary market. Now, uh, a second comment just come in asking about the Stag Junior. Now, I think Stag Junior against this year's. Um, BTAC stag side by side you would probably take the stag junior it's got that richer deeper fuller flavor to it this year's BTAC uh, stag is is lacking in that it's uh, it's not what it just it's not watered down because it's stronger but the flavor profile is weaker than last year's so now, I've got an off-the-wall uh, question for Reverend Toma here. D does your family, and Scott's going to roll his eyes, does your family play board games at all? Oh, yeah. Yeah, sometimes. All right. Now, have you ever tried or look into both Ticket to Ride and or Pandemic? Have you heard of those two? We've played Ticket to Ride. 
Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Ticket yeah. rides are great. I'm a huge hobby board gamist, but you might check out Pandemic as well. It's cooperative, and you're all members of the Centers for Disease Control, just trying to stop diseases from from running wild throughout the world. And you're working together, which is a real nice family thing. Now, now I'm kind of already doing that with four kids, walking around with bleach wipes, and just kind of <laughs> trying to present, know. trying to prevent pandemics. That's right, hand sanitizer. But I definitely, after just uh, reading uh, your books and seeing how you mentioned your family, I, I figured I would ask and throw it in there because uh, it's just great family time activity working together, especially pandemic okay. cooperative. Yeah. So. Yeah. Thanks. Now, Bart, you said I was going to roll my eyes. I'm not because I was lis listening to the radio when I was in the car earlier today. And yes. Ryan, Ryan Seacrest actually was talking about the rise in popularity of board games. There you go. go. <laughs> so you're I, right. Now, you're already on front of that wave. Yeah. Now, Scott, I knew you were a Ryan Seacrest fan. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Way back. You've been following his career for years. Uh-huh. Sure. <laughs> now, so I'm glad he said that. Actually, it is blowing up. So... Hey, real quick, though, again, on the comments, Jamie Beaver says that uh, Breaking Bourbon says there's about 9,100 bottles this year of the George Stag. So there are more bottles, and apparently they've, uh, I think they, they weakened it a little bit. Even They made the ABV stronger, but they weakened the flavor profile. Okay. Um, and then a couple people have asked what batch of Stag Jr. I'm referring to, and I honestly, I can't say. I don't know. Um, it's been a while now since I've had a bottle. I've had two or three different bottles of the Stag Junior, so I'm not sure which batches I've had. Now, Toma, real quick, is there anything else uh, you want to plug or anything else you're working on that we haven't mentioned or that you want to mention? Uh, no, just cruising along, working on uh, reviews as they come up. Um, I'm slowing down just a little bit in the sense of, of buying bottles, so take trying to do it a little bit more slowly. I would write three and four reviews a week, um, but now I'm trying to write at least once or twice a week. So hmm. I'm very I'm engaged in a lot of other things too. So I'm I'm very busy, very very busy. Well, I love how you're multitasking while you're on the treadmill, and you're are you working off of an iPad or what are you are you handwriting it? Well, I made a I, I actually made a tray. That I can attach to my laptop and it just stay or to my treadmill and I just put my laptop there and I type walk and type I walk at a four sometimes get up to a five um, but I can actually do that plug away that's perfect that yeah. leads to a story I once uh, Scott there is like this heavy runner I called him once and he was doing like 10 miles an hour he was three miles in and I could I thought maybe he was walking the dog or something I was like what are you doing he's like sprinting I'm like what because yeah if you hit me at 10 I'm like I'll be like barely alive at that point <laughs> that was a few yeah, I don't ago. I don't do any running I just walk I love the multitasking I'm gonna have to try that well all right. Well, I think we better. We're at the 53-minute uh, mark. So, again, uh, Reverend Christopher Toma, author of The Angel's Portions, Volume 1 and 2, as well as several other books. Uh, thank you for joining us, Chris. You're welcome. Thanks for inviting me, guys. Um, available on Amazon, you said? Yeah, Amazon, Barnes & Noble. you got to tell your uh, small stores to order it. Boom. Go out and tell them to order it in. Order this in. Make them do a third printing. Now, you also have a Twitter page, right? Yeah, yeah. Angels underscore portion. All right. And your blog is also angelsportion.com. Is that correct? Yep. Or am I yep, that's right. That's right. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, go check that out. You guys will be, if you don't know it already, you're going to enjoy all aspects. Well, read today's review. You'll get the full gamut of uh, picture day. That's the theme but then uh, how that connects to uh, the George Stag. Yes, and one last portion. If the Reverend asks you to remove your hat, please remove your hat when asked. <laughs> you like that one, huh? I love that one. That oh, man. Phenomenal. What the heck? What the heck's going on with these people these days? I know. They just don't want to listen. Well, I, you notice I didn't move till he did. There you go. You were you were you were pleasant and polite and insistent. That's right. And then I went back to my office before the Christmas service and I had a swig 
<laughs> no, I didn't do that. I didn't do that. Oh, no, that was beautiful. That conversation would have gone a lot differently had I done that. So there you go. All right. Wonderful. Well, hey, thank you for uh, joining us, Reverend Toma, and thanks for all the viewers that have been here. We've had to uh, have pe people coming and going. I think, again, a, a great show. And uh, Bart? Scotch it, you Scotch gods. Salancha, dummies. <laughs>